We are here today to advocate for services and supports for people with developmental disabilities to live in their own homes and fully participate in their communities and more specifically to restore cuts that are in the budget for these services and to preserve the, the services that we have. About how many people are waiting for services right now? The uh, waiting list for waiver services is over 13,800 and the wait is over 11 years and it just continues to grow because we're not adding any additional waiver opportunities and so the waiting list just grows and the wait increases. And what do these people do while they wait for these 11 years? They struggle. I mean, it is a, a real struggle for families caring for, sometimes it's a child, oftentimes it's an adult who lives in the home of an elderly caregiver, and it's very difficult. They struggle physically trying to do the lifting that's involved. They struggle financially and emotionally, and that's what's so difficult is they hold on as long as they can until they reach the end of their rope. and. They then um, oftentimes they seek institutional placement and it's, it's a really tough decision for them to make but sometimes they have no choice but to do that and that costs a whole lot more than home and community based services. Good afternoon <laughs> and welcome to the 2016 Disability Rights Rally on this beautiful gorgeous day. My name is Sandy Winchell, and I'm the Executive Director of the Louisiana Developmental Disabilities Council. On behalf of the council and our staff, I want you to know how much we appreciate you coming out today. It is so good to see a sea of yellow on these steps. We have been rallying on these steps for many, many years, but this is the toughest year we have ever faced. But with your persistent advocacy, I trust that we will overcome even the greatest odds that are stacked against us. I believe in you and the power of your testimony. You have the power to make a difference and together we can move mountains. We have a great program planned for you today, including our new governor, John Bell Edwards. I hope you are ready to be empowered and ready to yell. Let me hear you. Hey, hey, ho, ho. The cuts have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. All the cuts have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. All the cuts have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. All the cuts have got to go. Awesome. Okay, I'm happy to introduce your MCs for today. April Dunn from Baton Rouge, who is the vice chairperson of the Developmental Disabilities Council, and Micah Miskovis, a parent from Opelousas. <laughs> April and Micah are also both graduates of Partners in Policymaking. Let, let's welcome April and Micah. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I'm Micah Muscovis, glad you're here, glad to be here. And I'm April Dunn, Vice Chair of the uh, TD Council. <laughs> so Michael, why are we here today? So legislators will hear our message. <laughs> What's our message? Our message is people need to live in their own homes and we require and need individual and family supports and services to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Are those, all those services are optional? 
optional to people who need them, these services are not an option. They are often a difference between independence and institutionalization, life and death. Legislators need to know we are not an option. We are a priority. Make me a priority. 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 Make me a priority. Make me a priority. Make me a priority. How, how can they make us a priority? By filling vacant waiver slots for people with developmental disabilities. What's the big deal about waiver services? Waiver services help people with developmental disabilities live in their own homes and communities and have full and meaningful lives. These are the services that people want as evident of the long waiting list. How many people are on the waiting list? Over 13,800. Do you say 13,800 people? The, the wait must be really long. Yes. Over 11 years. Is anybody out here on the waiting list? So if people are waiting over 11 years for waiver, how do they get by in the meantime? They might, might be able to get a little help through our programs like the Individual and Family Support Program, Flexible Family Fund, and Families Helping Families. You do not sound too sure about that. No, that's because these programs have been cut drastically for the past several years and are facing new cuts in the budget proposal for next year. So do we want the funding for these programs restored? Yes. Yeah. All you people out there, I, I, can I hear you say yes? Yes. Yeah. I can't hear you. All of these programs are critical because many people are not receiving any other services and these programs can help families endure the wait. Without community supports, some people may have to move to institutions away from their family and friends. <laughs> hear me, hear me, home is where I want to be. Hear me, hear me, home is where I want to be. Hear me, hear me, home is where I want to be. Hear me, hear me, home is where I want to be. Raise your hand if you think life is better for people in the community. Everyone had an opportunity to live in their own home. These services need to be restored and protected from future cuts. So, it is very important for each and every one of you to talk to your legislators today and throughout the legislative session. They need to know that people with developmental disabilities are a priority. Yeah. Only you can make a difference. It's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Bambi Palazzola. Bambi has been an active member of Lacan for many years and a strong advocate for her son Chaz and many, many others with developmental disabilities. Bambi is also a graduate of Partners in Policy Making. She served in the Developmental Disabilities Council and was recently appointed to the Executive Director of the Governor's Office of Disability Affairs. Please welcome Bambi. Thank you. Thank you. It's so wonderful to see so many of you, my dear friends from across the state, who have come to the Capitol for Disability Rights Day. As Micah said, I'm the director of the Governor's Office of Disability Affairs. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge the Governor's Office um, of Disability Affairs staff here today. 
Jamal, will you raise your hand? Jamal Ennis, Jolyn Jolivet, Jessica Lewis, will you raise your hand? We're so glad to be here today. It's such an honor to serve in my capacity in the governor's office. And I always say Governor Edwards chose me, a mom, an advocate, a longtime LACAN member to oversee his Office of Disability Affairs. That speaks volumes that our governor values our advocacy in such a way. And thank you for your support thus far in his administration. For 27 years, LACAN advocates have been coming to the Capitol to advocate for services that support people with developmental disabilities and their families to live in their own homes and to be fully included in their communities. We stand on the shoulders of giants. When there was nothing, they had a vision that people could and should live, work, and play in their communities. I am forever grateful for those who follow in the foot and whose footsteps we follow in. I am forever grateful for you, our advocates of today, and encourage you and you guide me every day in all that you do. Because of our advocacy and the relationships we've developed with our lawmakers, thousands of people with developmental disabilities receive supports and are contributing members of their society. Unfortunately, our work is not done. Almost 14,000 people still wait for uh, waiting on the waiting list for home and community-based services. While my son, Chaz, has waiver services, my nephew and godson, Tyler, who is eight years old, receives no services. Tyler uses an iPad for communication, struggles with sensory issues, and we know he has so much potential if given appropriate supports and services, but he waits with the almost 14,000 people. This is not acceptable. Say it with me. This is not acceptable. The people at the top of the list have been waiting for almost 12 years. This is not acceptable. Say it with me. This is not acceptable. Families struggle every day to meet the needs of their family members with a disability at home. But without supports, they sometimes reach the end of their rope, physically, emotionally, or financially. And they have to do what seems incomprehensible to me as a mother. They have to seek out of home placement. This is not acceptable. Say it with me, this is not acceptable. We as a state must do better. We must assist families before they reach a crisis point. We must support families so that they can stay together, stay employed, and stay healthy. Our state has many needs, and our legislatures, legislators have difficult decisions to make, but one decision should not be difficult. When looking at all the needs in the state, people with developmental disabilities and their families must be a priority. We are a priority. Say it with me. We're a priority. Keeping families together at home must be a priority. Say it with me. We are a priority. Eliminating the waiting list must be a priority. Say it with me. We're a priority. Funding families helping families in early steps must be a priority. We're a priority. All of us here have a personal story. In some way, we all have been impacted by disability. Legislators need to hear our stories. They want to hear our stories. They can't make us a priority if they don't know us, if they don't know our story and what we need. It's our responsibility to educate them and about the importance of supports and services for people with developmental disabilities. Share your stories with legislators today. Ask them to make you a priority. Tell them what they can do to help. This is very important, but talking to them today is not enough. I encourage you to meet with your legislators in their district office several times a year so you can develop a relationship with them. That is so important. Get to know them and let them know that know you and your family. I've seen the tremendous impact that that has made for our community. As a parent, I fully know how difficult and hopeless it may seem to be on years long waiting list. But don't lose faith, don't quit. Let's draw strength from one another and continue to advocate. 
There are many people who stand with us and support us. Let's give a hand to those who stand with us and support us. We have Families Helping Family Centers. The DD Council. Many legislators. And our governor, John Bell Edwards who will continue to, to stand alongside us and advocate to end the wait. We will gain nothing if we are silent. Stand up, be brave, let them hear our voices. Together, we will end the wait. Say it with me, end the wait. today. It was my honor and privilege. Our next speaker represents House District 15, which is in Washita Parish. Representative Frank Hoffman is the chairman of the House Health and Welfare Committee. He also is an advocate for people with developmental disabilities to receive the support and programs they need to live in their own homes. Please welcome Representative Hoffman. Thank you, thank you very much. What a beautiful day we have to, and the great folks here to enjoy the beautiful day. So welcome to Baton Rouge. We are glad that you are here. I happen to be from North Louisiana, and I know there was a whole bus full of you folks in North Louisiana. We're glad to see y'all get off that bus. <laughs> Took a little while to get here, but nevertheless able to, to make it without any problem, and that is great. It is certainly an honor to appear before Families Helping Families, and you do so many wonderful things that are so important for our whole state. And as you work with so many people in so many ways, you do make Louisiana a better place to live, work, play, and worship. These many things you do include lots of categories, and we've already talked about it this morning. There are nearly 14,000 people on the waiting list. I saw many of you raising your hands a few moments ago. And if you're on the top of that list, you've been on that waiting list now for probably near 11 years. We've got to do something about that, and we've got to make that better. That's just one, but we do need to be successful. We need to find the funding, and admittedly, I have to admit, it's hard to find the funding, but it is important that we get that done. So for that reason, we do thank you for being here today, and we thank you for all you do to make everything we do better. We in the legislature want you to stay in touch. And you can do that in lots of different ways. You're doing it once today, and you're going to see your legislators. I am just happen to be one representing the House of Representatives. You know how many there are in the House, by the way? Who knows? What's the number of, of a House of Representatives? Well, 104 right now, and one more being elected. So when it's filled, it'll be 105. And over in the Senate, it's a little smaller side, but they have 39 over there. You can have friendly reminders by being in touch personally, by seeing them as today, or seeing them in the office, as I already mentioned, when you're back home. They like to see you come. You can email them, you can phone them, you can make contacts in any of those different ways. Now, to get different information about that, how many, how many of you know who your particular state representative and your particular senator happens to be? You know who that is, that's great. If you're not sure, you can go to our website, and it's a simple website, really. It's, all of them start with www, right? But www.legis.la.gov. So it's not that complicated. Uh, www.legis.lagov. And you can get all sorts of information about them. Uh, where they live, where their office is, what their phone numbers are, what their email is, and just how to make contact. And I think it's important that you stay in touch with them in many different ways. So uh, I hope you'll start that today, and I hope you'll keep up with that today. We need to do what we can to make sure that we can serve you. Uh, their cell phones sometimes are probably not on the website. I don't mind giving you mine. It's 318-805-3295. Eight oh five three two nine five, and love to hear from you. And I assure you, your folks would too. Times are tough in Louisiana financially right now, and you know that they're tougher than they've been in a long, long time. But your waiting list didn't just start. 
fact, it started many, many years ago. And we needed to start it a long time ago. But it, when we do, we need to get it rolling and keep it going. So you need to stay in touch with your folks, encourage them to do that. And, and we're going to do everything we can. I know you're going to hear from Governor Edwards in just a moment. He had a couple of things, but he is going to be here very soon. And we also have, I know you have a state representative, uh, and a state senator that's going to be with us as well. But once again, we wanted you to have a great day in Baton Rouge. Enjoy this beautiful weather we're having right now. And, and get your word across. I, your, your signs are very true. A waiting list is not a service. We agree with you there and want to do all we can to make it happen. Again, thank you so much for being here. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Governor John Bell Edwards. Not anymore. Governor Edwards was one of our champions in the legislature when it came to disability issues. And as governor, he has already proven that his strong support of people with disabilities is unwavering. And that is certainly evident by his presence here today. Please join me in thanking and welcoming Governor John Bell Edwards. Thank you. What a beautiful day to be in Baton Rouge, to be at your capital. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And I want to thank everyone with the Louisiana Developmental Disabilities Council, Families Helping Families, LeCan, other advocates, individuals with disabilities and family members. Thank you all for being here. It's a honor to welcome you to the Capitol and the Baton Rouge. You know, your presence here is more important than you might realize because Louisiana quite simply isn't doing all that it can and should uh, for people with disabilities these days. And I understand that we have tremendous budget challenges, but that's why you have to be here. We have competing priorities for fewer dollars. And so your voice has to be heard. So thank you for being here, for partnering with me and my administration, because we're going to continue to fight along with you and for you so that we do better. Look, a civilized society is measured by how it treats its old, its young, and those who can't care for themselves. We have to do better. We have to do better. Sharing your stories with legislators helps those without a disability to understand, to empathize to act. So being here makes that possible. Your voice has made a difference during the special session. Now, simply put, we didn't do all that we could have and all that we should have. And as a result, we have a $750 million shortfall as we put the budget together for next fiscal year. I believe we will have a second special session later this year in order to address the remaining needs that we have and I want to make sure that you don't stop advocating for those with disabilities throughout this process because we are going to come back, we're going to raise more revenue, and we're going to be able to do a better job of taking care of the people here in Louisiana who need our assistance the most. And I'm going to not stop, whether it's this year or next year or the year after, because you're not an option. You are a priority, and I like your side very much right there. So I need your help, I need your encouragement, I need you to remain engaged, and don't ever give up. Don't ever give up, because what you're doing is so critically important for our state. Uh, I'm committed to what you're trying to do, I'm committed to you all. So let's work together, let's make it happen. Do not leave here today before you have personally talked to your senator and your representative about what brought you to the Capitol today. And then let's keep communicating with them over and over and over so that they don't lose focus, that they don't lose sight of what this is all about, of why they're in this building behind me. Thank you very much. God bless you. I appreciate you. And now, as a governor of the great state of Louisiana, I'm going to issue an official statement that in the name of and by the authority of the state of Louisiana, I, John Bell Edwards, together with the citizens of this great state, and that means you, do hereby give special recognition to Louisiana citizens for action now in acknowledgement of your coordination of the Disability Rights Day. And I've signed that the fifth day of April, 2016. Thank you very much, God bless you. It is my great honor 
to introduce my own senator from District 24. I'd like to welcome Senator Gerald Boudreau. Thank you. Let's have another round for our governor. The governor's busy. He took time out of his schedule to come say hello. And it's not lip service. He's here. He's reading the signs and he's working with us every day to get the job done. I know it's getting warm, so I'm going to tell you a few things. I want to tell you, don't quit fighting because we're going to fight for you. We're here. We want to stay connected in all of our communities. I'm honored to serve the people of District 24, but this entire state. So let's stay in prayer. Let's stay together. We're going to get it done. The time is now. We're going to put our communities first. The waiting list is not just lip service. We got to get it done, okay? Let's get it done. Thank you for being here today. God bless each and every one of you, all our caregivers. I'm honored to serve and looking forward to working with our governor and all the legislators to get this done. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody, you heard our speakers talk about the importance of your legislators hearing from you today and throughout the legislative session. We heard your voices on these steps, but it's even more important for your legislators to personally hear your voices today and after you go back home when they are making decisions about whether to restore cuts and or protect services for people with disabilities. Remember, when you go inside the Capitol and advocate for yourself and others, you have the power to make a difference. Thank you all so much for coming. Now go advocate. And what can people in the community do to get involved to help end this huge wait list? Well, they can talk to their legislators and talk about the importance of these services and that they are more cost effective than institutional services and just the need to identify revenue. I mean, I, I believe that the Department of Health and Hospitals has cut to a bare bones budget and there's nowhere else to cut and that the department really needs additional resources in order to meet the needs. And one, um, several of our speakers talked about some other services that are available to people to help them endure the wait for waiver services. And those are state funded services that um, it's individual and family support, flexible family fund. And these are smaller programs that serve a smaller number of people. And they just provide almost like a little Band-Aid, just a little bit of assistance to families to help them endure the wait. And those programs are being cut. And so, whereas that might help a family limp along, um, you asked, you know, what do they do to... to endure the wait. Well, those programs were kind of a little safety net for the families that were in the most urgent need. And now those programs are being cut. And so those band-aids are being taken away. And so it's really critical that those the funding for those programs be restored. And where can people get more information about um, the organization, the cause, everything? they can go to the DD Council's website, which is www.ladc.org. And um, we have all of our fact sheets on there. You can click on LACAN, which is our grassroots advocacy network on our website. And that's all of the information. We really encourage people to sign up for LACAN. It's just our grassroots network. You will get action alerts, um, information when so much information changes, especially in the Capitol behind us. And we provide that information to individuals with disabilities and family members and just the public who's interested so that they will know what to advocate for and when it's happening here at the Capitol.